Hey, welcome back guys. Back on here with another Infinite Runner tutorial. And hell, at this point, if I extend the series just a few more years, might actually have the entire clone of Cannibal. I hope Adam's cool with that. So I got a YouTube comment not that long ago suggesting a whole host of features that could potentially be added. And of all the options, I chose Camera Shake because I think it's overall the simplest to learn and also the most portable. You can take it in just about any game, give it more of that, what everybody likes to call game feel. And I think it's a nice natural next step for this tutorial series because in the previous one, we did the, the falling grounds. And if you play Cannibal, while the ground is falling, the camera is actually shaking the entire time. So there's a lot of different ways to do camera shake with easing in and out and velocities and stuff like that. But for this purpose, the camera shake is pretty constant as you're running across the entire rooftop. It starts as soon as the building starts crumbling and then it stops shaking when you're not on that crumbling surface. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm also using a new version of Unity. The entire UI is completely different and cool or whatever. Uh, kind of threw me off guard, but whatever. So the basic idea behind camera shake is pretty simple. I mean, you have your camera component here, your main camera, it's your view into the scene. All you really need to do to make it shake is to oh, these controls here, just grab the uh, transform here and just move it up and down. And you can see the background there shaking, right? And that's the basic idea. And that's all we're going to be doing. And then just write some methods so that any other part of the game can call the camera shake to turn on and off whatever we want. So let's, I'm just going to go ahead and make a script here. Uh, create script, uh, camera controller. And I will attach it to the camera. Controller. And open it up. Like I said before, we're going with a camera shake that's pretty constant over time. So all we really need for that are two variables. One is how far the camera is going to be going up and down, which is camera distance, public. Let's be more specific here. We know it's the camera, so shake distance, let's say that. And then another one to say how fast it's going up and down, which is shake speed. <clears throat> And those will be able to control through the inspector. And when I say distance here, I really mean distance from the camera's original initial position, which we'll have to keep track of because the camera is going to be moving. So as soon as it starts moving, we lose track of where it was when we started. So just out of vector two here, say uh, initial position, right? And we can initialize that and start initial position is just transform position. And then we'll want to keep a tracker here of how far away it is from its original position. So this distance is more like a threshold of how far it can go. And then we'll have a position of here, a position here of how far away it currently is. And usually you just call those things offsets. So let's say shake offset, how about that? Shake offset. And then lastly, just a little Boolean so we can turn the shake on and off anytime we want. It's shaking. So let's go to update. We can wrap most of the code inside of the is shaking variable. So if it's shaking, and I guess we can start by checking how far the current shake offset is from the initial position, which is really just the difference of the Y components. Current distance is shake offset dot Y minus initial position dot Y. Since the camera is going to be bouncing up and down, we actually have two different thresholds. One is the shake distance for when the camera is moving up, and one is actually the negative shake distance for when the camera is moving back down. And we can actually track that based on the shake speed. So every time we hit one of those thresholds, we can just invert the sign of the shake speed so that it's, the shake speed is positive when the camera is moving up, the shake speed is negative when the camera is moving down. So we can just check against the shake speed to know which direction we're moving. So let's go ahead and check that. So if shake speed is greater than or equal to zero, and then an else state for when it's less than zero. And we know that when it's greater than zero, we'll just check against the shake distance. If current distance is greater than shake distance, then we'll just invert the shake speed. Uh, and then you can just do a times equals negative one, and that'll multiply it by negative one. And in the other case, if the shake speed happens to be negative, then if current distance is less than the negative shake distance, <clears throat> it 
And in this case, we do the exact same thing. Shake speed times equals negative one. And then it flips back to positive. And then lastly, after this if else, we'll go ahead and actually adjust the offset <clears throat> by the speed. So shake offset dot y plus equals shake speed times time by delta time. And now finally, we'll go ahead and set the camera's position. So that's just transform by position is the initial position. That's not what it is. The initial position plus the shake offset. Offset. So I'm just going to go ahead and test this for fun by setting the shake distance to something random like 0 0.1 and I'll set the shake speed to something like 1. And I'm not sure that might be a little slow. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and set is shaking to true just to see this. Whoops. Just to see this thing work. All right, go back to Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. The camera's moving. It is pretty slow. It's kind of moving a lot, actually. It's moving a lot more than it should be moving. <laughs> 26, 27, 28. What is going on? Oh, now it's actually doing it. Now, now here's the shake that we wanted. However, the shake is actually happening around 30. Interesting. Why is that? Shake offset minus. Well, I guess initial position is 16 and shake offset is zero. It's shake offset should really be. It's what we really should be comparing here for the current distance is where it's current position and the shake offset subtracted from the initial position, right? So let's grab the current position, position, and then make a little offset position, which is really just position plus shake offset. Now offset position dot y minus initial position dot y is, now that's gonna be the actual current distance. <clears throat> And there it is, shaking. However, there's nothing on the screen. Everything's blue now because the camera adjusted itself because we were updating the camera's position based on a vector two. So it zeroed out the Z position. That's just one side effect of using vector twos. It takes away the zero component. So we'll use a vector three for the initial position <clears throat> and We'll see we can't add vector twos and vector threes here. So we'll just we'll just actually turn the shake offset also into a vector three. And then the offset position is just a vector three. And that's also a vector three. Done. And now we shouldn't lose that Z component. And there we are bouncing up and down. So let's, uh, I guess, intensify that. So let's set the shake distance a little further and the shake speed to something like <clears throat> serious, like 10. Let's see what that looks like. That's actually pretty good. And I think there was something a little weird there. Let me just see that again. Yeah, it looks like the camera moved really far initially. It's like, yeah, it moves down very far. And I suspect that's related to the frame rate. Like right off the bat, the frame rate is pretty low. So the delta time is pretty high. So the distance we're traveling is a lot more. So I can really just simply lock in that position with a couple of if statements. Something like if shake offset dot y is greater than shake distance, shake offset dot y equals shake distance if shake offset dot y is less than negative shake dis distance shake offset dot y equals negative shake distance something like that let's see if that fixes that weirdness yeah it does okay so now let's go ahead and give the player the ability to turn on and off the camera shake 
And hey, if you like the video so far, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe. Who knows just how far this video series is going to go into the future. All right, let's add some methods here. Public void start shaking. So simple enough is shaking equals true. And then stop shaking. Let's scroll down here. We'll set is shaking to false. However, keep in mind that the camera could be in the middle of a shake. So it could be offset from its initial position. So we'll just reset it. So transform depth equals initial position. And the final step here is linking it up to the player. So I'll go ahead and open the player script. And we can just give it a reference to the camera. So let's go ahead and do a camera controller. That script that we created, camera controller. And then on start, we'll go ahead and find it. Camera controller is our main camera, and Unity has an easy way to do that. Camera dot main, and that's basically the camera component. But we're going to want the camera controller component, so get component camera controller that we created. And then I believe there's code in here for, since the player has a reference to fall here, the player knows when they're landing on a falling surface or jumping off a falling surface. So I'll go ahead and find where they land. This is the land code. So player fall equals this. Okay. So then we'll just access the camera controller, camera controller. That's not it. Controller. Start falling, start shaking, I'm sorry. And then the same thing, but for stop shaking, whenever the player jumps off, and I believe that is here, it falls like a null. Here's where we basically jump off the falling ground. Camera controller, stop shaking. And then we'll go back to the camera controller because we don't want it to shake by default. And that should have the camera shake and stop shaking whenever we land on or jump off the falling rounds. Let's see if that's one of them. Nope. So there it is, camera shaking. You can see the camera shaking while it's falling. And it actually stops shaking every time we jump off. And maybe that's a desired effect. Maybe it's not. I think the camera's shaking a little too wildly. That's just me. Uh, eight, maybe increase the distance. Let's see how this looks. It's gonna fall here. There it is. And that's not bad. I like that. Pretty cool, huh? All right, that's a camera shake. Pretty simple overall, and you can take that script and put it into really any game you want. Thanks for taking the time to watch. As always, the project files will be linked down below. And let me know if you have any questions or ideas in the comments. Thanks, guys.